everyone have a wonderful morning. Thank you for being here at Mystery Night Methodist Church for our time of worship. We appreciate you all being here this morning. Let us begin our time with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us a place to come, Lord, that we can gather, that we can uh, bring our worries and our pains of, of this past week, Lord God. Set them at the foot of the cross to pick up your love, your grace, and your mercy. We pray, Lord God, that your spirit will connect us, Lord, that it will bind us, Lord, that it will make us one people of one mind and one accord, standing on your promises, Lord God, and your gifts. Lord, we pray that today you would gather us together, Lord, in your spirit, Lord, that we would uh, see you, hear you, and know you, Father God, that we can worship you with everything we are and everything we have. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And we pray today, Lord God, that you will hear our voices as we gather together to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. We thank you all for being here again at worship. We appreciate you all. Um, are there any announcements? Good. So if you would uh, uh, take your hymnal, stand if you are able. We're going to page 362, 362. We're going to do one, two, and four. One, two, and four.
so much of time we praise God for all things good and all I can share with each other. Does anybody have a praise? This is a praise and a prayer request. Um, our son Stephen has been on the bone marrow transplant. Anyway, he got a match. And it's a 16-year-old boy who's fighting leukemia in Charleston. He's matched with others, but after they do the blood work, it's never advanced past this, but this particular time it has. So he will be going, he'll be taking shots every day this week and then Thursday going to Charleston to do whatever they have to do. Um, once this young man is through with his chemo and all, he will use whatever Stephen's donating to build himself. The doctor will use it to build this young man back up. Any others? Um, finally got that, uh, all those uh, bushes cut in the front yard, or as much as I'm gonna cut, but um, it, took, it only took a month, so praise God. Any others? Catherine will probably do this one when she's able to come, but not that I can't not say it. She had to use an off at the spot with Cincinnati. She only worked for a week, but she's had lots of clients. She's feeling very comfortable in the setting. The, the environment, the employees, everything has been very, very welcoming. She's very, very excited to see what she's doing really well there. So, Amen. So, for that. Also, um, I haven't talked to him, but I know that uh, Dalton Dixon is back mm -hmm. from his deployment. Um, I saw him running around and I'm trying to wave at him and he went he hadn't hollered at me yet, but he's back, so praise God for that, that uh, he was safe and back in the house. Any others? It's not a blessing, but uh, we only had 17 people in this room this morning, and we're all spaced out. I have no objection. No problem. You. Huh? Any others? All right. If you would turn your uh, bulletins to the back of your handles, I mean, to the back of your bulletins. <laughs> sorry. Just back to the bulletin. You see those uh, people we are praying for in situations. Are there any that need to be added or can be removed? Diana Keston. It says T I D S. T -E, the last name? Uh huh. Keston. T E S T O N. Okay. So Dale's cousin passed away, is that right? Yes. That was her cousin. Yeah, her cousin. Jose, you can um, take my name off. I have a phrase I didn't offer a second ago. I wasn't even thinking. Uh, take things for granted. But I had some tests run a couple weeks ago and got some results back Monday afternoon. They all came back very positive. So. Thank you, Lord, and appreciate the prayer. Amen. Amen. Any others? Go to the Lord of Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you have your hands on us, that you lead us, that you guide us, Father God, especially in difficult times. We pray now, Lord God, for every name on this list. We give you thanks for those that we can uh, remove, Lord, see you working in their lives. Father, we pray that you will continue to help these people with the help. Uh, with the things that they need, Lord, with resources. Father, most importantly, that you would put your hands upon them in love. Lord, give them hope. Father, let them hear your voice um, as they go through their hard time, Lord God. 
We thank you, Father, that you uh, love us. You gave us your son, Jesus, Father God, and you give us the Holy Spirit to support us, to comfort us, to lead us, to guide us. Father, we pray that you would continue to do so for every name on this list, for those that we added, for those in our heart, Lord God, and for those in this community that we don't even know about. Father, we know that uh, right now we, we feel like we're separated, Lord, but we know you bring us together through your love, through your grace, and through your spirit. And we pray you continue to do so. Help us to uh, have the strength, to, to have the eyes to see, Lord, that we can go forth and help others in their time of trouble. Lord, we thank you again for all that you do. And we pray you continue to do so. And we pray now that you sometimes us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. You would um, stand if you are able. Uh, we are going to uh, sing four, six, seven. And we're gonna sing one, two, and four. Four, six, seven, stand if you are able. Also to let you know where we are, um, so continuing to, to do the, the tithing, either in the front here in the basket or the, the basket in the back. We're still gonna, we're not gonna have anybody coming up and down the aisles, but we are uh, still gonna continue to do the same thing. We'll, we'll pray after the song and then uh, continue on. All right, so stand if you are able. Four, six, seven, four, six, seven. One, two, one.
if you would follow me to the letter to the Romans, uh, chapter eight, we're going to start at verse twenty-six. Romans eight, starting at verse twenty-six. Uh, Romans 8, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, from whom he foreknew, he also be predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, moreover whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate, separate us from the love of God, the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. Amen. We have, uh, last week, um, started talking um, about several things and one of the things that, 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 that I mentioned was was one thing that we needed to, to look at was our walk with God um, and being that, that we're talking about walking or being with him and uh, connecting this verse really shows us how we need to begin to understand our walk with God. There are a couple of things that, that we need to know. Okay. That we need to understand. And uh, one of the, the things that uh, was really evident to me when I began to, to, to study and, and read this today is, is the word that kept on coming to me is unending. Unending. Ceaseless. Always. Completely. Unending. Meaning that there is no end. Right? And in our, I mean, have you ever, ever even seen something that never ends? I mean, and truly, now, you know, we, we have things, you know, like the buffet or, you know, those kinds of things, right? You know, but eventually those things have to end too. I mean, all that ends. Everything ends, right? Life ends. Money ends. You know, all those things that, that we are told that would give us. Um, pleasure and, and or completeness or, or whatever. And I, I hate to say it, I mean, you know, even you know, the love of your life, eventually that's going to end. Why? Because death comes. So even that ends. So all the, all, everything that we're kind of given in our life ends. So we don't really understand what it means 
to have something that's unending. You know, it's, it's a circle, basically. It just feeds itself into, into itself, and it, it's always going. And that is uh, what I began to see in this verse, is the fact that God has made it where our connection to him is unending. There is no end to what, how he wants us to connect to him, but also in how he gives us the ability to continue to do so, even though there are forces in this life that are going to try to stop you from being connected to him. There are things that are working to try to hinder you, try to make, to convince you that you are alone, that you are by yourself, that you, you know, we, we are in a, in a time where, um, you know, you need to just go ahead and give up. And this, uh, all these forces in the world are trying to separate you from God. And, uh, you know, and so, you know, it gets heavy. I mean, you know, even right here, right now, right? I mean, there are, there are certain of us that are nervous because Billy said, hey, man, we're separated. Can we just take our mask off? You know, because all the things that feed into this society, you know, are, are making us afraid to, be, to remain connected to God. And as you see, the, you know, we don't have a whole lot of people here. And I respect, I'm not trying to bash anybody for not being here. I get that. I get it. But the, this world tries to separate us from God at every moment and every instant of our lives. And we have to understand that it's trying to do that. And when we begin to understand that we are trying to be separated from God, then we can begin to see how we can combat that. And one of the things in the verse that uh, it begins with, that God helps us with, is the fact that he gives us the Holy Spirit to connect, right? You know, the Holy Spirit is called the comforter, you know, the leader, the guider, and all these things, right? He comes, and the Holy Spirit helps us to remain connected to God. And one of the things, you know, that I know, I don't know about you guys, but um, I have always struggled with the understanding of prayer. And I've studied it, and I've read books, and there's countless books and countless of people tell you how to pray, all these things. And, and uh, prayer is one of those things that, uh, I won't say that it escapes me, but I always feel, sometimes I feel like I'm not really doing it right. Like, I'm, I mean, I, I, I understand the concept of, you know, separating yourself, giving yourself time, all those things. And those things are, are perfectly great and good, but there are times that I don't even, that I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm doing enough for me to, to communicate what it, what it might mean. And see, this is, this is the great thing that God gives us. He gives us an enemy connection through the Spirit, as it says it in the verse. He even communicates when you don't have any words. When you don't know what to pray for. All you know is that you're hurting and there needs to be, there need, you need help. God gives us a way to have an unending connection with him through the Holy Spirit. You know, you know how great is that? You know, because uh, I don't know, all you guys that went to school and had to write papers, right? You had to make sure that every word was correct, every thought was, was understood, and that you had to compose it in the right way for that professor or teacher to, to give you a grade, right? The grade that you wanted. Right? See, God, God's given us grace and his love. But we don't need to compose anything, any, any particular big speech or anything. All we have to do is come with him with our hearts open. That unending connection that God has given us, where you don't need to, to be a great orator and stand up and give this great speech or communication with, with God. All you have to go and... and and this is enough. The Spirit helps us. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're, you know, what in hurt or 
or in, in thanksgiving or in praise. It doesn't matter. You can just lift your hands and God automatically knows what you're trying to say. And that's how he, com he communicates. And that's how he keeps us communicating in an unending fashion. You know, it says to always pray and, and, and pray ceasingly, uh, right? And I never understood that really. I mean, am I supposed to be walking around under my lips, you know, kind of just, you know, praise God. Mm -hmm. This constant under prayer, understand, you know, this constant thing of prayer. And, you know, so I, I mean, I, for a long time, I was confused. I was like, you want me to just kind of mumble all the time? I mean, people think I'm crazy already. I mean, you know, how, how is that going to work? And it's, it's not about, you know, constantly, you know, repeating something. But it's about living in the constant awareness of his presence. That's, that's the, the, uh, the constant prayer life. It's knowing that God is there and acting accordingly. And you're in a constant prayerful attitude if you are acknowledging God at every moment of your life. If you can acknowledge God in every moment of your life, then he's constantly there. So you're constantly connected. You're constantly praying, no matter what. Now, it can be done in a spoken word, or it can be done in the thought. Absolutely. But, you know, we don't have to be walking around constantly, you know, opening our mouth and, 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 and expressing the needs, you know. It's just the connection through God and through the Spirit. I want you to know that the Spirit intercedes. See, words don't lead, the heart leads. The spirit leads, and the words will follow. The more we're connected to God, the more we give Him our hearts and, and, and the inside of us, and the more we, we uh, know that He's present, and the more we acknowledge that presence, then the words come. Because then you can distinguish what it is that, that you need, and the more connection you have. So you don't have to worry about knowing everything. The spirit knows. Because the spirit is in us, the spirit is, the spirit understands your pain and your joys and and your praises. He understands all that, so you don't have to. Now, don't hear me that I'm. The pastor said I don't have to pray anymore because I'm okay with God. I mean, that's not what the pastor is saying. The pastor, you still have to take time, and you still have to find what works for you. I always tell you that what works for you. I mean, some people can wake up at five o'clock in the morning. And spend all with God. Praise you. I cannot. Especially now with this whole COVID thing. Well, they don't get up to buy a shirt. You know, that's awful. It's awful to say, but it's the truth. But I mean, you have to find your place and what, what works for you. Okay? You know, one day, I, I don't know if you remember a long time ago, I brought a guy in here talking about prayer years and years ago. And I said, Is that the way I have to pray? But no. You take things from from different places if it helps you and you make up your own prayer life. So whatever works for you, at night, in the morning, separated, out in the woods, I mean, whatever. God knows that and he understands that. But the key thing is that we have an, uh, a, a, the possibility of an unending connection to God through the Holy Spirit. Through his, his presence in us, if we let him in, and we acknowledge it, then God is with us um, all the time through the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the unending connection, right? We have an unending connection to God. But what, what, what helps us to have that unending connection is the fact that we have unending love. And um, I think it verse, starting at verse, um, Verse 31 says, what then shall we say to the things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did spare his own son, but deliver him for us, all who shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, and it goes into that, we'll get into that in a minute. But there's an unending love that God gives us. And we'll get into the fact that, of what is trying to remove that love from us. 
But the love that God gives us is the it gives us the the possibility of this unending connection first starts with this unending love. And it his love of God starts with the fact that he gave us some for us, right? Okay, God came, he lived on earth to teach us, and then he, you know, he was sacrificed so we can have an opportunity to get to heaven, and then he went to the right hand of God so we can have the power to live. Okay, that's love. And it's not this, this love that, that, you know, kind of goes away. It's a love, and we talked about this a lot, it's the fact that it surrounds us and it guides us and it, it changes us and it makes us better. And, and, you know, part of this is says, well, you know, God has justified us, then he has glorified us. God, through his love, has made us right. He has made us just. Okay, not in our own power, not in our own understanding, but in the fact that Jesus Christ is God. And through his sacrifice and his resurrection, and it gives us the opportunity to be just. Think about that. You know, in my life, that, that's huge. Huge. Because here, a couple years ago, it came up on my feed at Facebook. There, there's, there's people in my life now that, you know, will, you know, have given me their trust and their love and their understanding the sheriff of Bethlehem County gave me a badge. Okay, he's come to check on the sheriff's office. The, 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 he has given me a badge and, and total access to not only him, but all his people. What was he thinking? I mean, really, seriously, when I told my, my friends and my parents that, he, they were like, what was he thinking? Does he not know you? Does he not? Understand, you know, who you were? And see, that's, a, that's the glory of the love of God. It's that, that that stuff doesn't matter. God makes us just through that love and that sacrifice that he had given us. Then it doesn't matter what happens. And then he gives us the opportunity to, to, to do and be these things that we never thought we'd ever be. You know, I always joke. I always joke that, you know, I've been here... We're going on 12 years, or no, we're finishing 12 years. We're finishing 12 years. Who'd have thought? What were you thinking? You know? I mean, what, 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 what was the sheriff thinking? What, you, what were you thinking? But that's what God does through his love. That, that we begin not to see who we are or who we were, but we begin to see with his eyes of who we can be. Who we can be. He makes us just. And when he makes us just, then we can become glorified. You, I can't even, I don't know how to express the understanding of being glorified. You know, I, I always think of, of, when I think about the word glorified, of, you know, these movies I've seen where the angel comes down from heaven, you know, and, and oh, and, you know, the song sings. You imagine to be glorified? Because you're, you're walking around just. But he's going to make us glorified with his unending love. So he, gave us, he gives us that power and that understanding. When we get to accept that, when we get to walk that and live that, then we understand how this unending connection can remain. You know, but, but there are things, and here's the truth, there are things in this world that are trying to tell you that you are first are not justified and secondly you will never be glorified because you're never connected and we're going to show you how right see the other thing that God gives us is the unending power to come back to these things that tell you that you're not going to be okay you know and it gets into this it goes in here in a, uh, let me see where it is Verse 35 it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? Yet in all, and jumping down to um, 37. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, 
nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created, created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He names a, a myriad of things in both of these verses that are here to tell you that you are not just, that you'll never be glorified, that you're not connected, that you are alone, that you're naked. You know, you have, you know, the, the, the biggest thing, especially in our country, I think, because, you know, uh, Europeans are a little more liberal in their, in their aspect of nakedness. But, you know, in my understanding, you know, the worst thing is being naked, is being naked like naked and alone, naked in front of, you know what I'm saying? Naked, just, I mean, I have problems taking off my shirt at the pool. You know what I'm saying? And the, the understanding of being naked and alone. There's a show on TV, and I, I have not stopped and watch it at all because I cannot, I cannot. Naked and alone is not something I ever want to be. And I, and I hate that you signed up for it, but I don't want you to be naked and alone either. Naked and alone is, is a scary, scary thought. And they use that. Those things that make us fear, you know, uh, peril, uh, the sword, you know, persecution, whatever. Those things, they, they try to tell us, hey, you know what? These things, these things will you know, are on you, and you are naked, you're alone, you're out there by yourself, nobody's here to help you. And they try to convince us of that every day. Every day. You know, of, of the fact that we are not connected, that we are not just, and that we that will never be glorified, and that God is a figment of our imagination. And they try to convince us of that so they can separate us, put us out there in the middle of nowhere, Right, so we can be alone and then have no have no hope at all. That's where they want us all. You know, and that's where we, through our through our ending connection to God, can fight that. God gives us the power to do that. He's trying to tell us, look, man, through this love and through this connection, you have the power because I am in charge. I'm at the right hand of God. I am controlling things. I'm giving you things. I'm right here. I'm right here. And I give you the power to fight these things. You know, one of the things that we get so so wrapped up in, don't you worry. Where it says that God No, I lost it. But in here it says where God is trying to to make things make all things for your good. It's in it's in here. I can't read the title enough because I can't read. Um back to the clock. Back. But um it says that God works everything out for the good for the good of those who believe him. Right? Now some have preached that as a prosperity thing, right? When you believe in God, everything's okay. That's not what it means. It means that even through your even through your times of trouble, even through your times where you're, you're in the darkest point, that God is going to use those things to help you get to him and know him and love him and be better. All right? It doesn't mean that we're never going to go through stuff. You know, that's what people always, always believe. I believe in God. So you get mad when something happens to them or, or a loved one passes away or somebody gets cancer, you know. Uh, I had an experience of early in my, in my time I was becoming a a pastor, I had a friend of mine, you know, he was in his late 40s, drank his whole life. I mean, his whole life. And I'm not talking about just a beer here. I mean, he drank. And then with me and him, and as we belonged to friendship, eventually got to the point where he accepted Christ. Well, a month and a half later, he was cirrhosis of the liver. The doctors were telling him, you know, hey, you know, this is pretty bad. And he's like, but I accepted Christ. Yeah, but you drank for 40 years. Just because God is in our lives doesn't mean that the world isn't going to touch us. Because we are we live here. We live here. So if you live here, I mean, you know, there are things that happen. You know, it rains on everybody. But God, because of your belief and your connection to him 
and being just and being glorified, that he's going to work it for your for the betterment of his belief. So that's the power and the promise that we have. Is that no matter what is going on, no matter what is going on, you are still going to be glorified. Still. So there's no need to let all those things that are trying to separate us from God, from his love, from his understanding, and give in to those. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. And I'm not saying you're not going to need help. See, that's the issue. Right? We think that we can take care of it on our own. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to call a pastor, or I'm not going to call my buddies to pray for me. I'm not, I'm not going to let anybody know that I'm hurt and that my you know, I'm not going to let any, any, any breaks in my back show. And that's the, that's the lie that, we, that the world tries to, to tell us. You cannot do this by yourself. God did not intend you to do this by yourself. That's why there's congregations. That's why we are called united. That's why, you know, we, we, we strive to always let people know, I am here. You don't have to believe if you don't want to, but let me help you. Stop thinking that you're by yourself. Okay? Don't, don't let that creep into you. That's what, that's, that's what the enemy wants you. He wants you thinking and understanding that you're by yourself, that you can't handle it, that you're all alone, and nobody understands. Nobody understands what I'm going through. I'll find you somebody who understands. There is somebody, not, not exactly what you're going through, but to a point where they, where they can relate to you. They're out there. And they follow Christ. And you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to um, keep going at this alone. But that's why we're always trying to kind of get back to each other. God has given us the power. He has given us the connection, and he had given us the love, this unending circle of, of things that we have that God has given us for us to always realize that we're in his hand and that he loves us. And no matter what, man, you're not alone. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to finish off with uh, 526 stand if you are able. Let's do one and three, one and three. 526. of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you take his unending connection and his unending love and his unending power that you may go forth to help others to find their place in his hand. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.